welcome to another awesome video. Today we're looking at the Sony TC-FX707R. Now this tape deck is from the 80s and a lot of words on there you see totally scream 1980s. You got computer, laser, digital, all that stuff. But you know what you don't see on this tape deck? Knobs. Right, there's no knobs. Why do you think that is? Because it is 80s and there are buttons. Well, I guess that's true. You know, you got computers, you got compact discs. All these things were seen as very high tech in the 80s and the style of this deck reflects that. But it doesn't always work out well using buttons to set everything. So we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna talk about what's inside the tape deck and fixing it involved a hard repair with a bunch of ball bearings. You know what ball bearings are? No. I'm gonna need some pliers and a uh, set of 30 weight ball bearings. What? What the hell you need ball bearings for? Oh, come on guys. It's so simple, maybe you need a refresher course. Hey! We'll get back to the ball bearings in a minute. But first, one example that shows how computer control affects this deck is the tape type selection. On older decks like this Blaupunkt, the tape could be selected by manually setting a knob. And eventually it became a standard feature on cassette decks to detect the position of those switches and set the tape type automatically. Now Sony really takes this to the next level. Consider for example this Techniques deck on top here. Notice it's got a red light when a uh, Type 1 tape is in there right above the word Techniques. If I hit Eject on both decks, the Techniques light on there, watch it, it'll switch from red to orange. That's because the position with all switches down is essentially metal, so it goes back to red when I put the Type 1. Uh, Sony, however, uses its little computer to memorize the last tape type that was loaded. So for example, let's say we put a Type 2 tape in there, it's going to flash and the computer is going to recognize, hey, I've put a Type 2 tape into the machine, do all whatever I need to do. You can see it flashing there, but it stays lit even after I take the tape out. The Techniques, on the other hand, is simply just a indicator of the switch setting position. So that's a little subtle difference there that Sony has put into this deck, which is kind of cool. As a side note, this also detects or doesn't detect Type 3 tapes, you can manually set it. I'm too young to remember Type 3 tapes, but uh, I guess by the time I got into tapes, they were phased out. Now it's time for the repair section. If you're not interested, just skip ahead about three to four minutes. Now, as usual with older tape decks that have been sitting a while, one of the problems was the belts. Here's the belt. It's on and the motor's turning, but the flywheels aren't turning. So I just sort of like, uh, was able to get it turning by just messing with it there. But as you can see, it's sort of dancing all over the place. It doesn't have good pickup or whatever. So I ended up replacing that belt. So that was one problem. Uh, the other problem that I noticed off the bat was more serious. A lot of people hate auto reverse today because they claim the heads don't work uh, exactly right. And I've never had any problem with that until now. Let's watch what happens when I, uh, when I hit the reverse mechanism on this head. Look at that. Look at that, it's not turning around fully. So in order to get to the bottom of both of these problems, I needed to disassemble the deck and get the cassette mechanism loose so I could get access to it. And uh, it really wasn't too bad. There were some screws along the top. Uh, there's a top plate and also some screws along the bottom. There are the flywheels. Uh, the belt is really loose there. I removed the flywheels to clean them and you can see uh, at the back side of this thing, there's that little white sort of stick there in the middle. That's the back of a anchor shaped gear and the anchor shaped gear is what actually causes the head to flip back and forth. And so if I manually flip it here by turning another gear, you can kind of see the action of the head moving there. And so it flips to reverse and, and whatever. But the anchor shaped gear is getting stuck is what I thought the problem was initially is it was just getting stuck up against uh, one side or the other. And so it wasn't pressing down enough to clear an obstruction. So if I manually cleared it, the head seemed to align itself from, you know, it seemed to turn around the entire way. So I oiled and lubricated it and I was able to get the head to turn all the way one way or the other. Unfortunately, that didn't fix the problem because it was still loose as you can see here in this picture. And the effect was like this. Uh, it was completely muffled unless I nudged the head into place. When it would reverse, the anchor shaped gear would stick. And then sometimes if I unstuck it, it would sound okay but uh, it just was still having a lot of problems.
eventually I realized that the problem was the head was loose in the little holder there. And unfortunately, and you know, messing around with it, that's where all the ball bearings fell out. It's all ball bearings nowadays. So yeah, it was a very tedious process to replace all of the tiny ball bearings in the little channel. I ended up having to do it upside down with this entire mechanism upside down. And even then the, the core problem was, you know, there's nothing really holding the head in firmly. So I got it a little bit better and it'll generally play in the forward direction, but I think the head mount or the washers on the little thing are just worn out or something. But anyway, I definitely would not recommend ever doing this. The service manual that I found wasn't for this deck, but it mentioned the head mount just coming pre-assembled. So I could never find any proper procedure uh, for replacing these bearings. And if it's not obvious from this video, I am just a hobbyist. I am not a professional. This deck is not particularly noteworthy or valuable, so probably not worth spending a whole amount of time replacing heads and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, enough about repairs. Let's get back to features and talk about digital level controls. Everything here is digital. You have the main record level with these two large buttons here. You have an auto attenuator, which overrides that level. And also that rightmost digit uh, monitors how far you are over zero dB as you make a recording. You have a Dolby NR toggle there. You have your line out and phones level there. And all those settings can be written into audio memory slots A or B. You just basically adjust it how you want and then hit write and pick uh, what you want to write. Uh, I could see this setting as being useful if you have special settings for different sources like a really hot CD player versus a quieter phono or you're making different tapes, you know, for car versus home and you want to have different settings memorized. Is it better than the traditional analog dial or slider? I don't know. I don't think so. I actually kind of prefer that. But if you're going to go digital, um, it's nice to have those memory options. There's another memory button called function memory. You can press the button, then enter a series of simple commands like rewind and then start playing again. And then you press the function memory button and it'll execute all those commands. Uh, not much else to say about unique features on this device. Uh, it has music search, quick reverse, and settings for the various auto reverse modes. In conclusion, I feel like this deck is uh, very much like the last one we looked at, the TAC R555. It's heavily computerized. Construction quality is good. We've got some decent components on the inside. It's labeled well for service. Uh, but the plastic micro switches on the front are sort of evidence of cheapness starting to creep into the cassette deck world. And we all know where cassette decks ended up. Just look at the top Sony. It's mostly plastic, even the flywheels. However, that's not to say that it's a bad deck. I would pick the top one over this one. I might pick differently if I could get either one of these new in the box. In my thesis, basically the peak of cassette decks, quality and construction was the late 70s, early 80s. This Yamaha from 1981, which we featured in another video, has far superior uh, knobs and construction and just build quality. But anyway, that's about it for this deck. See you next time for another awesome video.